track a band of Urukai westward across the plain. They've taken two of our friends captive. Look for your friends, but do not trust to hope. It has forsaken these lands. We're lost. I don't think Gandalf meant for us to come this way. He didn't mean for a lot of things to happen, Sam. I knew within 48 hours we were involved in making cinema history. I knew. More and more people also talk to me about the ending of the first film. They're like, what's up with the ending, dude? Well, it's, it's gonna continue. The fate of the world will soon be decided. It's a phenomenon. It's, it's, it's cinema history in the making. The dominion of evil grows even stronger. Part one was a damn wonderful film. You ain't seen nothing yet. There is a union now between the two towers. Barador, fortress of the Dark Lord Sauron, and Orthanc, stronghold of the wizard Saruman. The characters all sort of take their own journeys in the two towers. It's a roller coaster journey from, from the first minute. I just knew it was going to be an epic adventure. Not the movie, but, well, the movie, but also the making of the movie. I really see the second film as, as the beginning of the journey. At the beginning of the film, Frodo and Sam are in these rocky hills trying to navigate their way around. What does that orange stink? Oh, Lord, there's a nasty bug nearby. Can you smell it? Yes. I can smell it. We're not alone. The ring starts to take more of a hold of Frodo. He, he starts to become more openly obsessed with it, and they ended up running into Gollum who becomes their guide. Where is it? Ah! Ah! Just tie him up and leave him. No! You know the way to Mordor. We decided that Gollum should be very much a, a human-driven CG character. Andy Serkis was cast to play the part of Gollum. Not just do the Gollum voice to animation, but to sort of be the, the soul or the kind of the spirit of Gollum. He drove the performance. We all just want to create and make Gollum the most believable digital stroke being that's ever been created. We'd actually go through the process of kind of rehearsing the scenes with him as any other actor. Action. We'd shoot a reference pass. That would then go to the digital department, so it gives them a clear idea of how they want to animate. The marriage of animation and motion capture has been absolutely fundamental on this. After the reference pass, we would then act and interact with nothing, thin air, which was interesting. And then he would go on to a motion capture stage and put on this tight suit and with all these kind of markers that would record his movements into the, into the computer that would then be basically put on to the digital character. So it got to be a guessing game, like what, what cool piece of technology is going to get pulled out of the box today? You know, is it going to be wires or the camera that slides down a thing? Or are the, the crew going to be asked to build a, a crane on top of a precarious, you know, mountain precipice? I have a confidence in special effects. I don't think that Lord of the Rings is a film that should have been made by somebody who didn't really understand special effects because it would have been very easy for the effects to overwhelm the story. They must have caught our scent. Hurry! We pick up with Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli doing what they were doing last, running as fast as they can, trying to catch Merry and Pippin and, uh, and their captors. You get into the race of the journey and the, the, the pressure against time and just to, to sort of put a stop to this evil that's coming in. Aomir is the nephew of King Theoden and the third marshal of the Riders of Riddermark. What business does an elf, a man, and a dwarf have in the Riddermark? Speak quickly. I remember sitting in the theatre at the end of the first film and I just felt cold sweats of nervousness come over me and thought, my God, that was so incredible. And then you sort of you think, think down to a, you know, a year ahead when it's, it's your turn, you just hope that it's good. <laughs> I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. 
as you get caught up with the lives of the survivors. So it's, it's a great delight and surprise, I think, as you turn the pages to realize that Gandalf is back. It cannot be. I come back to you now at the turn of the tide. The Two Towers takes us much more into the world of human beings than we did in the Fellowship of the Ring. And we go into the kingdom of Rohan, which is a very Viking-like, almost a sort of Scandinavian style civilization. And we meet the king of Rohan, uh, Theoden. The courtesy of your hall is somewhat lessened of late. Theoden king is not welcome. Why should I welcome you, Gandalf Stormcrow? You can't get any lower and still be breathing, considered alive, because he's, he's, he is virtually a zombie. He is, there's nothing, he's an empty shell. Late is the hour in which this conjurer chooses to appear. Last spell I name it. Ill news is an ill guest. Be silent. Keep your full tongue behind your teeth. I have not passed so far in death to bandy crooked words with a witless worm. There's an ancient king uh, on, on his throne, being fed ill advice by his wicked member of his staff. Saruman corrupts Wormtongue. He is making Rohan weak so it will fall to Saruman in the end. Saruman's forces have begun their attack. He is using Saruman to destroy your people. They were unarmed. They had no warning. This is but a taste of the terror that Saruman will unleash. And of course, when that poison's cast out of him, he, he then realizes to what extent he's let his people down. And that guilt then goes into the resistance of some of the suggestions that are made. You must fight. I will not risk open war. Open war is upon you, whether you would risk it or not. A new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. It's more complex, and it's more difficult, and it's more exciting, and the landscapes are more varied. And it's also a more human movie in a way. You must lead the people to Helm's Deep. By order of the king, the city must empty. Where is she? The woman who gave you that jewel. The human beings in this story are dealing with war, like they're right in the middle of it. So when you meet Eowyn, she is a very proud and strong character and believing in the great days of Rome. It's fantastic as an actor to be standing there when they have the power with the camera to do huge shots and crane shots. You just feel as an actor as you're standing there this enormous power behind you that you know you're in this huge epic shot and action it's awe-inspiring to be working for say a two-week stint and be picked up from your hotel in a helicopter and taken to the top of a mountain you know and not coming down for the whole day I have made my choice. It's a sad time, it's a parting time for elves because he knows that their time on this earth is, has come to an end. He is not coming back. Why do you linger here when there is no hope? If Aragorn survives this war, you will still be parted. If Sauron is defeated and Aragorn made king and all that you hope for comes true, you will still have to taste the bitterness of mortality. It's not this big, huge thing for her to give it up because it's everything she wants to go with him and be mortal. You learn a lot more about what's at stake for them and perhaps why they're destined to at least try to be together. And he understands that she's in love with Aragorn but he also knows that elves uh, have to leave. The alliance between men and elves is over. Our time here is ending. Arwen's time is ending. Let her go. 
you'll see Mary and Pippin alone. So they don't have Aragorn or Boromir or Gandalf to help them. So then they have to mature. They have to find a way to take hold of their own lives. What's making that noise? It's the trees. What? Do you remember the old forest on the borders of Buckland? Folk used to say there was something in the water that made the trees grow tall and come alive. Alive. And they find themselves with, I think, one of the most fascinating characters that Tolkien ever created. Uh, he created, in his mind, a walking, talking, living tree. They had a, a huge tree beard, moving um, animatronic. And they had part of his animatronic as he had these branches that were like hands that myself and Dom Monaghan, who plays Mary, could sit in. But they didn't make them very comfortable. <laughs> They pull at parts that maybe shouldn't be pulled at, and, you know, it kind of gets you down after a while, and, and you need kind of Vaseline at the end of the day. And it was such a hassle to get us up there and hooked in that during tea breaks, they used to just leave us up there. <laughs> if that's the only thing that you can complain about at the end of a day when all you've done is played with, you know, your friends on set, then, you know, it's no great hardship. I always like to have a, a few laughs on set. I don't think it's particularly healthy for anybody to take this too seriously, no matter how big the movie and no matter how much money's being spent. It's my new assistant. I'm sick of walking. So. You know, he's the puppet master. He's the guy that, that pulls all the strings and keeps us all together. He is a, a, a tenth member of the Fellowship, without a doubt. This is if Pete Jackson has, has put an, as much depth into the movie telling of this story that Tolkien did in the, in the book telling. The ring of power within my grasp. It's much more dynamic and, and exciting and more adventurous and darker and scarier. Use the ring, Mr. Frodo, just this once. Put it on. Disappear. I can't. This is the very spirit and essence of Tolkien. There will be no dawn for men. the ring. Frodo! Let's take it hold of you. You have the gift of foresight. Tell me what you have seen. He is not coming back. The defenses have to hope. They will not. There is nothing for you here. Only death. There is still hope. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It was a journey that we all had the opportunity to take together. The nine of the Fellowship went into a tattoo parlour in Wellington and all got a tattoo together. We've got this pack that we never show it when there's cameras. Turn off the camera, I'll show you. Yeah, that's well, that was another kind of... Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How are you, mate? See you. <laughs> Who is that? Who's that guy? Some extra, I don't know.